Oh, what's going on, Game Weepers? The cheese is back at it. I hope you're all ready to send it in patch 11.9, which is just a few days away. And in today's video, I'm going to be helping you out for next patch because I will be revealing the 11 worst champions of 11.9. So to be ready for it, to know the champions you should probably stay away from, this video is going to be huge. And we're still running timestamps on these videos, guys, for your benefit. So you better still be smashing that like button. And one other thing I know you're going to like is the Game Weep website. Guys, for everything related to league improvement, we have it. Whether it's a champion course, a champion guide, a role guide, it's all fresh and up to meta so you can achieve your rank goals this season so sign up links as always in the description and comment section all right let's get into it starting off the countdown the 11th worst champion of the next patch is one none of you would have expected because at this moment in time he is the most banned champion in the game for how op he is but next patch rider gutting him so to those of you abusing hecarim for free op unlucky and there are four nerfs to deal with here and most of the time when riot throw multiple changes at a champion they aren't really that significant but all of these are your base armor is going down so you're going to be low after you fall clear, which makes you easier to kill when you fight the enemy jungler and gank lanes. Your Q's rampage stacking is less than half of what it was previously, which again affects your clear and fighting, and your E's minimum and maximum base damage is down a ton, so you don't have to be nearly as scared when the enemy Hecarim is charging at you. But that's not all, because your best mythic is also copying it, and for all you turbo chem tank abusers out there, and I don't blame you for exploiting this item, it's way too good at the moment, you are losing a bit of movement speed and it's active, though for Hecarim, this is especially bad because you do more damage than more movement speed you have. This is your passive. So now that you're getting less of it, you're not hitting as hard, and it's a massive jab this 11-9 patch for Hecarim. Now nothing is changing next patch for the champion flying in at number 10 on the countdown guys, but this AD carry is like the opposite of Hecarim. Because in 11-8, Aphelios got so many buffs instead of nurse, but unfortunately the weaponizer is still pretty trash. Like it looks good because your ultimate weapons are better off, but if you get caught once, you're dead. And in late game team fights, even in early game team fights, you have to dodge and evade up to 20 cooldowns the enemy team might throw at you. And don't get me wrong, AD carries have always been like this, but usually there's a way out. In this meta, there is so much damage that you die quicker than ever, and you're just better off picking another marksman who can peel themselves or even an AP carry. It's true that in the pro scene, Aphelios works, and that's because teams are coordinated and actually game plan with their AD carries in mind and sometimes around these ADCs. But in solo queue, I mean we're all well aware of this, teams are as coordinated as silver clash teams. So Targon's marksman regrettably features again in our worst champion series. Now just ahead of Aphelios, guys, we have another a champion who has been targeted by Riot recently, and ever since the balance team increased your ultimate's cooldown in 11.6, Lilia has been simply underperforming. Yes, you can still clear quickly, and it's not like your core cool items have been nerfed and into the ground, but the fact you can't put your enemies to sleep as often is a big deal. Kind of like our channel, so make sure you hit the sub button if you haven't already. And what this means, guys, is that in those early to mid game team fights, you know, when you don't have enough ability haste, you're less useful and way less of a threat. Now, maybe Lilia gets picked at MSI because her ultimate utility is still there, but like Aphelios, that's in a team environment at the highest level, and 99.99% .99 of us don't play in such games. So for almost all of solo queue, Lilia is a real struggle. Now speaking of struggling, 11.9 is going to be another tough patch for Bilgewater's Johnny Depp. So for Gangplank guys, not much is really changing, and that's the issue. You were in a bad solo queue state before this patch, it's just going to continue. The Essence Reaver nerf from 11.7 is really big because two of your big sources of damage, your passive in Q, scale with your bonus AD. So much less of a spike in that regard. And then if we think of the other champions in the top lane and their first item, spike, like Darius, Camille, Wukong, Garen, Aurelia, they are super scary. And some of these bruises in particular, like Camille, Riven, and Wukong, will be even more of a pain to play against next patch because of that Death Dance buff, which will increase their attack damage and armor, so they're harder to kill and you're easier to kill. Like others on this list, yes, Gangplank is picked by pros because he brings so much to the team environment, and these pros are exceptional Gangplank players, but not everyone is. And there are other champions you can just pick in the top lane who are a lot less mechanically demanding, but reap greater rewards. Now, beating GP to the number 7 spot on our countdown guys is a mid laner who hasn't been a good solo queue pick for the entire season and after riot nerfed oriana's e in 11 8 she is even worse off so because you're losing some resistances when your ball is on you and remember you're not maxing this until later so for the first 15 minutes of a game you're very squishy and if you throw in the seeker's arm guard nerf into the equation as well against zeds talons yones kiana's castixes the laning phase is a lot harder to win and requires a lot more precision and experience on top of that Saras embrace isn't giving you an active shield this season so in the big picture though you still have a lot of team fighting power and presence, you are a lot more vulnerable, hard to make work, and it's no surprise that Ori has around a 47% win rate at the moment. Now coming in next at the number 6 spot guys is a champion who has appeared on each and every worst champions video so far this season, and it pains me to mention another AD carry, but I can't argue with the fact that Callista just isn't that good. In the early game, yes, you might have kill threat with Hail of Blades in your rend, but unless you're 10-0, you don't do nearly enough damage to have an impact on a game and carry. The new Immortal Shield Bow isn't great either because you no longer get attack speed when 
when its lifeline passive activates, and as we all know, attack speed is massive on Callista. On top of all that, think about the other mythics in the game. There's Stridebreaker and Chemtank. Both of these items cuck your mobility and in turn your damage, and you are just way too accessible. Like Orianna, it takes time to really master Callista's playstyle, and you need support and pill from your teammates to be effective. Now, do you guys know another champion who's really accessible? Well, this battle mage is the most killable champion in the game. With no more Rod of Ages, with less armors and seekers, with no more shield and seras, as Rise, you are a sitting duck in that mid lane. Yes, your damage is still high, but whose isn't? And being able to do damage is one thing, but being able to deal that damage and survive is another. Even the buffs to Frozen Heart this season haven't made it really that viable, and with the strength of early and mid game lethality items, there is nothing stopping you from hitting the deck. And this is also very achievable at the moment because of your short range. You have to get up close and personal to other champions to dish out your damage, and what do you do when a Darius with Stridebreaker hits you, or a Camille bounces off a wall and stuns you? You die. Now, another champion that dies a lot and shares the same problems as Aphelios and Callista is boasting the number 4 spot in 11-9. She has enough damage to be able to hard carry, but not the tools to stay alive to deal all her damage, so Zaya means, I'm sorry to break it to you, but 11-9 is going to be more of the same. Yes, your laning phase is a bit better because your E's cooldown and mana cost got lowered at the start of the season, but a 3 minute ultimate cooldown? What are you meant to do with this? This is the only legit peel you have in your kit, and if you don't have it off cooldown, there is no way you're walking out of a fight. You also have the Essence Reaver nerf to contend with, and the fact that teams don't really care about their ADC until high reloads, so for those of you battling it out in lower levels of play, you might as well just play Jin or Kaiser if you want to win, and it's kind of sad how that's been the case all season. Now as we get into the top 3 guys, we have some big champions to reveal, especially the number 1 pick, but before we do, it's one last running reminder from the cheese to head on over to our website when I stop talking, because who doesn't want to improve their Summoner Rift game? You can be one of thousands with exclusive access to all of our fresh Challenger tier content, so get amongst it, links down below. So yeah, the third worst champion of 11.9 guys is the Emperor of Shurima who has been buffed and nerfed this season according to its presence in pro play, it's ended up with Azir having the lowest win rate in the entire game. Now the nerf that was really questionable recently was the W nerf which lowered your soldier's damage to the point where your auto attacks deal more damage, that's how stupid it is. And even for the Riot Balance team, this was a real shocker. Also if you think about the new Nash's Tooth which no longer gives you any cooldown, well this is nowhere near as good as it was before the preseason update, and then you have the Seekers and Zonia's nerf and the problem with scaling. Like how many of you Azir mains, you can let me know in the comments, actually gets your 2-3 major item spike without the game already being over. And come on, be honest. And if you don't get there, you have to hope your team plays around you, and it's just a world of stress and hope you can avoid by just picking another major or mid laner. So 11-9 is here, guys. You could even put him at number one. He's that bad still. Now, the runner-up to the new worst champion of the next league patch is last patch is number one. Now, you can play him in the mid lane, in the bot lane, even in the top lane, but whatever lane you choose as Lucian, you are going to cop it big time. Kind of like Lister, you need a substantial lead to 1v9. And let's say you do end up stomping your lane. Then what? You're great in 1v1s, no doubt, but when more enemy champions appear on your screen, you're going to die. Unlike Ryze, you have very short range. So even if that Garen you're against is 0-5, let's say, he can stride breaker into you and probably kill you. Or if a feeding Udyr pops his chem tank and slows you and stuns you, if his team is anywhere nearby, you are dead again. The problem here, guys, is there is no room for error. The Essence Reaver nerf from 11-7 doesn't exactly help. Same with the Lord Dominic's Regard nerf from the same patch. So you're just much better off picking another AD champion. Now the winner, if you can call it that, of the 11-9 worst champion medal is one I don't think many of you would have guessed, unless you actually play this character. Now this champion got changed a lot recently, but most of it wasn't good, and for Ramus, it has seen his win rate go from well above 50% across the board to well under 50%, and what changes am I talking about? Well, your taunt is a little shorter, and the biggest downside is your new ultimate, which sends you flying towards the target direction, which sounds kind of cool, but your shockwave doesn't follow you. It stays at that target direction. So unless the entire enemy team is dumb enough to just stand inside of your ultimate's radius, it's very useless. This also means you can't stick to enemy champions and you can easily get kited around. Now what makes it worse for you Armadillo's next patch is that Turbo Chem Tank is getting nerfed, which we talked about for Hecarim, and Dead Man's Plate is also on the chopping block. So you're losing 100 HP and against magic damage in particular, you are going to die that much quicker. Ramus means, what are your thoughts on his current state and what needs to change or revert for you to be happy again? So those are the 11 worst champions of 11.9 guys, as always, thanks so much for watching and remember to let us know you enjoyed the video by leaving a like down below. Until tomorrow's video, this has been The Cheese, peace.